In this video, we're gonna learn how to design a reinforced concrete beam for shear. My name is Tyler Lay and I'm a concrete freak. Now shear design of a reinforced concrete beam can be confusing to a lot of people, but there is a awesome path through the maze. Follow me through the maze. We're gonna be designing this beam. It's 13 inches wide, 21 inches high. It's got three number eight bars at the top, two number six bars at the bottom, and a number four tight. Now I usually would never use different size bars for the top and the bottom, but I'm doing it on purpose in this example to teach you something because just pay attention to find out about the because. We're using a fixed fixed beam. It has a five kip per foot factored load on it. It's factored. We don't need any dead load or live load. It's already factored. It's 22 feet long. Now, the first question you have to start asking yourself on these problems is where is my tension? Where is my tension at? Now, you can imagine what the deflected shape is going to look like, or you could just kind of think to yourself, where's my tension? We're going to have tension, 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 tension here, here, here. That means we're going to have compression here, 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 the tension. Now, why is that important? Well, when it comes to shear, you have to think about what's my D? What's my D? Well, that's the distance from the compression fiber to the center of the tension steel. I have different size bars here on the top and the bottom. I have different Ds depending on where the tension is at. Ha ha, tricked you, didn't I? Now pay attention, I'll show you through the maze. Now if I figure out that my tension is here on the sides, that means I would use the top bars. My tension is here, that means I would use the distance to my center of my bottom bars. And the tension's over here again, it would be top bars again. Now I have to think about where is my shear the largest? Almost always, the shear is largest at the supports. Almost always. And we're gonna find the, sh the shear diagram down here and it's gonna be right, it's gonna be at the supports. So we need to use the shear and the D here, that's what we're designing for. So we're gonna be using the D towards the top steel. I hope that makes sense. We're using four KSI concrete, 60 KSI steel. Our internal cover is one and a half inches, and I apologize for using imperial units, but my class is taught in imperial units. If you're an SI person, I hope you can still follow along. The first thing you're going to do is find the capacity or the value of your shear diagram. So you're going to say V is equal to WL over 2. That is 5 times 22 over two, and that equals 55 kips. That means that this value is 55 kips, and this value is 55 kips. Ha ha, very cool. Now we gotta find our phi, our V divided by phi. Our V divided by phi, which is equal to 55 kips divided by 0.75, and that is equal to 73.3 kips. And that means this value is 73.3 kips, and this value is 73.3 kips. Now we find our D, and remember that's to the top bar. This bar, the three number eights at the very, very top of our beam. I explained that before. This is going to be our H, this is our cover, this is the diameter of a number four bar, and this is one half the diameter of a number eight bar. And that value is equal to 18.5 inches. Now, I have to find my V over phi at D. Does that rhyme? V over phi at D. V over phi at D. Now I gotta figure that out. Now how am I gonna do that? Well, first I've gotta figure out what am I t talking about? I'm trying to find this value on the shear diagram. And this value happens to be D away from the edge. Now, how can I find that? Well, I can use my friend's similar triangles, right? If in similar triangles, I'm trying to find this value, which is X, this entire value down here is going to be 22 over two times 12, which is 132 inches. That entire value down there is 132 inches. And what's this value going to be? Well, of course, it's going to be 132 inches minus D. 18.5. That's what that value is going to be down there. Now, I've got to use my similar triangles. Here we go. 73.3, that goes in the numerator. The denominator is going to be 132, the entire length. This numerator, what? Uh, uh, it's X. I don't know what it is. And this denominator down here is going to be 132 
minus 18.5 inches. That means when we solve this whole thing, we get 63 kips. Ladies and gentlemen, that value right there is 63 kips. And that is going to be an important value we're going to design our beam for. Now we can find our V sub C. We take 2 times the square root of F prime C BWD. Here we are plugging into that equation. Remember my D, that is the D to the top steel. I've explained that before. And my V sub C is 30.4 kips. Now, which case are we in? We've got to figure that out. Which case? You don't remember? Well, let's look at these cases. This is this way to understand shear design. The method through the maze here. If we know what our V sub N is, we know what our V sub C is, we can figure out are we in A, B, C, D, or E, and this tells us what to do. This is the secret. So, let's see. Our V sub N is going to be 63 kips. Our V sub C, or that's the one at D, right? That's the one at D away from the edge, the one that we're really going to design for. Our V sub C is 30.4 kips, and our VN over 3 is 21 kips. And now we get to compare. Which one are we in? Which one are we in? Uh, C. We're in C. That means we get to calculate our stirrup spacing. No big deal. I'll show you how. We get to use D over 2 or 24 inches. Let's go. Since we're in KC, I have to calculate what the shear stirrup spacing is. I know this equation, this is just moving around that VN and V sub C and V sub S. And then I know this equation for V sub S. I'm going to combine them together and solve for S. So just go over that again. My AV is 2 times 0.2. My FY is 60. My D is 18.5. And this is my VN minus C minus VC, and I get 13.6 inches. That's my shear stirrup spacing. So I can either use 13.6 inches or D over two, which is 9.25, or 24 inches. So what am I gonna use? Well, I'm gonna use the smallest. So this one controls, but I'm gonna round it. I'm gonna round it to nine inches. I'm gonna use an S of nine inches. Now I have to check AV min. You might not know what this is, but if you've heard of AS min, this is the same thing, but for shear. So I'm gonna take 0.75 times square root of 4,000 divided by 1,000 multiplied by 13 times nine, that's my shear stirrup spacing, divided by 60. And I'm gonna get 0.09 inches squared. And now I do the other one. 50 times 13 times 9, all divided by 60,000. And that's equal to 0 0.1 inches squared. Now, both of these, both of these are much smaller than 0 0.4 inches squared. So I'm okay. Everything is good. So what I've just done is found the shear stirrup spacing. And what I could do, which is actually the really smart thing to do, is just stop. I could stop right now and use that spacing throughout. Number fours at nine inches, and I'm done. I'm finished. But you might say, whoa, couldn't I optimize that? Couldn't I save some shear stirrups? Let's try it. So we're going to try to optimize. And that's kind of an oxymoron because it's very challenging to optimize when it comes to shear stirrups. The best way actually to optimize shear strip spacing is to not optimize it at all. But let's just see. This is the diagram that this is the shear diagram that we just had. We we're looking at this section, and I'm going to blow this up really big over here so we can keep working on it. We can talk about different zones. And what I'm talking, what I'm showing here is this was 73.3 kips. This was 63 kips. This was the shear at D away from the supports. And if I drew a line down here, this would be this D, which would be 18.5 inches. That is the spacing away from the supports. And in this zone right here, I'm going to use a spacing of nine inches. I'm using number fours. Everything is good. Everything is clear. Oh yeah, I'm gonna add one more thing. I was in zone C there. I was in zone C. Now, as we can see, our V sub N was 63 kips. Our V sub C previously was 30.4 kips. And at the very far left, very, very, very far left, right over here, V sub N is greater than V sub 
C, which is greater than up, that should be a three. 63, this, this, I'm in zone C. We've already proven that. We've already talked about that. It's done. It's clear. That's the same thing we, we said before. Now, what we're going to see is that this shear stirrups are going to, this shear diagram, this is actually VN over phi. This shear diagram is actually going to go down and down and down. And so one would think that it would get to a point where I could use less shear stirrups. Now, I'm going to figure where that is. I want to find out where is case D at? Where is case D? You can't remember what that is? D. It's right here. It's where my V sub C is greater than my V sub N. It's over here. It's when I can use the minimum amount of stirrups. It's when I can use D over 2 or 24 inches. I'm going to find out where is D at. So if, if you see what I'm saying, this value is going down and down and down. I want to figure out where in this line is D. Where is D? So when will we be in zone D? When will that happen? Well, that is going to happen when VN is equal to 30.4 kips. That's when that's going to happen. Now, I need to figure where that is on the diagram. Where is 30.4 kips going to be? Well, I can use similar triangles again. If you recall, this entire dimension from here to here, from here all the way to here, all the way to the edge, that entire distance, boom, 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 was 132 inches. And I want to find out where D is at. Where is 30.4? I'm just going to make believe and say it's here, and we'll find out the exact diagram, the exact place where it's going to be. So to do that, I would say that I could use similar triangles where I would say 73.3, 73.3, divided by 132, 73.3, divided by 132, where is that equal to 30.4, that's in the numerator, divided by x. We'll call it xd. Where, the, where is the d at? xd. Now, if you do algebra and find out where that is, xd is at 54.7 inches. That means that this diagram to here, this value to here is 54.7 inches. That's what that means to that spot right there. That's going to be, where's my D at? Right there. This is zone D, where zone D starts. Now, what can I do in zone D? Right, let's go back to the diagram. I can use my minimum shear, AV min. That could be good. And I could use D over 2 or 24 inches. Now, if I recall, and I think back, my minimum area, my AV min from my calculations, was equal to 0 0.1 inches squared. That means my AS that I can use is equal to my AV over 2, which is like 0 0.05 inches squared. Well, that doesn't help me out very much because there's not any bars that are like that small. It just doesn't happen. So I'm going to just use, I could use a smaller bar though. I could use a number three bar. That's the smallest bar that they make. Now I got to figure out what, what spacings I can, I can have. Well, my spacings can either be less than D over two or 24 inches. So in this case, my D over two is, is 18.5 divided by two or 9.25 inches. And again, I'm going to use nine inches for my spacing. So what does this mean? This means that my S here is still nine inches, and but I get to use a number three bar. A number three bar. So I could, if I wanted to optimize, I could be using number four, number four, number four, number four, number four, and then go to a number three. Now, what happens where is zone e at zone e you don't remember that let's look zone e it's all the way over here on the side that is when my v sub c is greater than 2 v sub n that is my zone e that's when i don't need shear stirrups anymore what's my talking about you can imagine that as this shear diagram gets smaller and smaller and smaller right as this shear diagram same diagram gets smaller and smaller and smaller there's a point in the middle where I don't need stirrups anymore. My concrete's so strong, I don't need stirrups. Let's find out 
where that magical place is. That's going to be equal to VC over 2 is equal to V sub N, or 30.4 divided by 2 is equal to 15.2 kips. So we're trying to find the magical place when we reach 15.2 kips. Yeah, there's a lot of magic in concrete, magical places there, 15.2 kips. And that's going to be my friend zone E. E, E. And the cool thing about E is no stirrups, none. I don't need them anymore. So what's this value going to be? Oh man, that's what I gotta figure out. Back to my friend, the similar triangles. So to do that, I'm going to take 73.3 divided by 132. I'm gonna set that equal to 15.2 kips. That's the number I'm shooting for. I'm gonna divide it by XE, that's my distance to E, and XE happens to be equal to 27.3 inches. So this value right here happens to be 27.3 inches. And if we actually solve for all of these, these spacings, every single one of them, the spacing here, the spacing here, the spacing here, all of them, just do a little bit of algebra, you would find this is 27.4, this is 58.7, this is 18.5, now, I'm done. I've got a region where I need no stirrups, a region where I need number threes at nine inches, number fours at nine inches, and I'm gonna go ahead and use number fours at nine inches here too. Usually you match this, whatever is in here, whatever's adjacent to it, that's the same thing you use in this zone. So I've got this spacing at number, number fours at nine inches. Then I could drop to a number three at nine inches if I wanted to. Then I could drop to a region with no stirrups at all. Now I did all this calculations, all of this to save about three stirrups and reduce the bar diameter. And reducing the bar diameter doesn't really save you any money. It actually just complicates things because people are laying out number fours, then they have to go to a number three, then they have to figure out where there's no stirrups. It's just a lot of work. It's a whole lot of work. And so this layout, I would say at the very bottom here, is it's crazy, all right? It's, in my opinion, much easier just to use number fours throughout the entire beam. Just number fours everywhere at nine inches and don't worry about this because people don't do this. And except in very, very, very rare cases do people really try to sharpen their pencil. They're gonna do a member hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times and saving about $30 a member can make you then a whole lot of money. Then they may do it, but typically we do not do things like this. We don't do things like this. We just use our number fours at nine inches everywhere. And this is this great statement here. In a way, not optimizing your design is actually optimizing it because it's optimizing it for your time. And remember, time is money, baby. And time on a test is points and you get extra benefits. You get these extra stirrups to help with ductility and any unplanned design loads. Hey, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Bye-bye.